In lesson 54, we'll look at another way to identify a point on a Cartesian coordinate system, and that's called polar coordinates. And then we'll also talk some more about similar triangles. Part A of this lesson is on polar coordinates. And to understand those, it's a good idea to review what rectangular coordinates are and apply those to understanding polar coordinates. All it is is a way to identify a point. It's a different way to identify a point. And so let's just start. Say, for example, we had this point, 4, comma, 2. Now, there's another way just to write rectangular coordinates. You know, when we do 4, comma, 2, we go to the right 4 and up 2, and we locate that point. So we could just write this 4R plus 2U. That's another way to write rectangular coordinates. So that's something we'll be describing in this lesson. So let's just go ahead and plot that point on the graph to the right. 4R plus 2U, we go to the right 4 and up 2. And so that would be the location of that point. We have those two ways of identifying that point, 4 comma 2, or the same thing in rectangular coordinates is 4R plus 2U. Now we can also use something called polar coordinates. And that point could be located relative to the origin by a distance, which would represent that red line there, and also by an angle relative to the x-axis, the positive x-axis. Now for that particular point, that angle there is a 30 degree angle, and then the distance from the point to the origin, that is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 about. And so that is the magnitude and direction for that point. It can also be described using a magnitude and a direction. The direction is the angle. So something called a vector, what I've written there at the top of the board, vectors, those have a magnitude and a direction. And so to write a vector, we use polar coordinates. We have a magnitude, I'll call that M, and an angle, I'll use the symbol theta. That's a Greek letter that is commonly used to represent an angle. M, angle theta, magnitude and direction. Now, what if we wanted to graph this point, negative 4, comma, 2, and we wanted to know what the polar coordinates were for that? Well, let's just write down the other form of the rectangular first. We could say negative 4, R, so we're going the opposite of right, plus 2U, and so we go to the left 4, up 2, put our point right there. The magnitude of that point, or the distance from the origin to the point, we could represent by that line there. And the angle, the way we do the angle, the direction, we always start from the positive x-axis, and so this would be the angle representing that point because we have to figure out how to get over to that location. Think about the magnitude line, that red line that I have drawn from the origin to the point. Think of that like as a pencil. And if you took your pencil and you put the eraser at the origin and you laid it flat along the positive x-axis, you would just pivot it around to get to that point. That's the angle representing that particular point. So let's do one more example. If you had this, negative 4, comma, negative 2 for a point, you would say minus 4R minus 2U. That's another way to write the rectangular coordinates. That's all I'm describing there. That's not polar coordinates. That's just another way to write the rectangular coordinates. And we would say to the left, 4, and down 2. And our point would go right there. Now as far as figuring out the magnitude and direction and thinking of it in terms of polar coordinates, we draw a line from the origin to the point as normal. Then the angle is from the positive x-axis around to that magnitude. So polar coordinates, that's a way of writing a vector. And a vector has a magnitude and a direction. And so that's how we can write it with a magnitude, which is the distance from the point to the origin, and then a direction, which is that angle relative to the positive x-axis. Now something else to notice here, and I'll talk about this in a second, we can make a triangle 
a right triangle relative to the x-axis for each of these magnitudes and points. Like, look at the bottom left one. See, if I draw a line right there, we have this right triangle. And then over here on the top right one, if I draw a vertical line right there, we have that right triangle there. So, something to keep in mind. Now, in this lesson, what you'll be doing is you'll be taking polar coordinates and converting them back to rectangular coordinates. And you'll have to use some trig and you'll set up some right triangles to do that. Look at this xy axis that I've drawn over to the right. Now, let's say we had this for a magnitude and let's say its angle was about 47 degrees and the magnitude equaled 5. Convert that to rectangular coordinates. And so what you do is you set up a right triangle based on that magnitude and angle. You set it up relative to the x-axis. And so we'll just draw it like this. And you can see that right triangle there. Now we'll call that x side r and the y side u, the upside and the right side. Now we can figure out both of those because we have a hypotenuse for this right triangle and we have an angle. And so if we wanted to figure out what u was, we would say that sine of 47 equaled opposite, which is u, over hypotenuse, which is 5. And so u would equal 5 times the sine of 47. And so we could just do that on our calculator, 5 times the sine of 47 and we could just round that to two decimal places that equals about 3.66 and so we'd say u equals 3.66 and then r that would be cosine of 47 is equal to r over 5 adjacent over hypotenuse and so r would be 5 times the cosine of 47 so make sure you do cosine and not sine again. So you say 5 cosine 47, that equals 3.41 about. And so that's what R is, is 3.41. Okay, so now you can write that, just write it in terms of R and U. You could write it like a point. You could say 3.41 comma 3.66. But the way they want you to write the answer is in terms of R and U. So you say... 3.41 r plus 3.66 u. And so that's your answer for that problem. Now, I mean, my graph when I drew it, it wasn't exactly to scale like I wanted it to be. I mean, you look at the r value. You can, If you just looked at my graph, you'd say that r was equal to 4, but we got 3.41. So just trust the trigonometry instead of my graph because my graph is not exactly to scale. So writing it in terms of R and U, writing rectangular coordinates that way, that's just like writing a point 3.41 comma 3.66. It means the same thing, it's just a different notation, a different way of describing that. As are polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are a different way of describing the location of a point. You use a magnitude and a direction or a vector. And that magnitude and direction identify this point right here that I'm making. So there's more than one way to identify a point on a Cartesian coordinate system. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems. Practice problem A, I want you to convert that to rectangular coordinates. That's polar coordinates, so convert it to rectangular. And so just make an XY axis. You don't even have to have tick marks on here. And just Think of a pencil, put a pencil at the um, origin, line it up with the x-axis, put the eraser at the origin, and just start moving around, and you would go up through 90, and 120 would be about right there. I mean, you don't have to be perfectly exact. You're just using this x-y axis to help you identify the location of the point. And so then draw a magnitude line. And we'll label that 7. And so that angle there is 120 degrees with an angle or with a magnitude of 7. So we're identifying a point over here 
This is called the second quadrant. Remember in a Cartesian coordinate system, we break it up into the first, second, third, and fourth quadrants. Now, remember what we did on the previous example? We set up a right triangle relative to the x-axis, and that allowed us to solve for the r and the u values, or the coordinates in rectangular form. So we'll do the same thing here. Set up a right triangle relative to the x-axis. And that would be right here, like this. A right triangle right there. And so to find our two coordinates that we need, our r and our u value, we need an angle in here. And we just make that angle based on the magnitude that, or the direction that they gave us, 120. So we, if we just kept continuing that arc around, we'd add another 60 to it, right? Because 120 plus 60 is 180. That whole, that would make like a half a circle or 180 degrees. So this is a 60 degree angle right there. Now let's label our triangle that we've made, U and R. So we should get a negative value for R and a positive value for U if we do everything correctly. And the only reason we drew this coordinate system is just to help us understand how to find the point and how to convert from rectangular or from polar to rectangular coordinates. We still have to use our trig functions to calculate R and U. So that graph didn't help us with our actual values. It just helps us figure out and visualize what we need to do to get to our R and U values. So let's go ahead and solve for those. We have a magnitude or a hypotenuse in this case. We can call it that now. And an angle. So we can solve for U and R. U, that would just be sine of 60 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And so U would equal 7 sine of 60. And so we would just do 7 times sine of 60. And that equals about 6.06. .06. So U is equal to 6.06. .06. Now let's do R. And we would say cosine of 60 is equal to R over 7. And then we do 7 times cosine of 60. Cosine of 60 happens to just equal 1 half, so we can just say 1 half times 7 is 3 and a half. And so R is equal to 3.5. Now think about it. When we want to define the point, R is to the left of the origin, so it's a negative value for R when we find and we define our point using rectangular coordinates. So we'll say negative 3.5R plus 6.06U. That's a mistake that a lot of people make when they set up their triangle. They calculate R based on cosine 60 and they just say, oh, well, it's a positive 3.5. But you've got to look back at your diagram that you made and recognize that R is really a negative value. So to get to that point that we're trying to describe, you'd have to go to the left and up. So R must be negative. That just makes sense that it would be negative. That's why it's so important to make a polar coordinate graph of the magnitude and direction and then set up your triangle to figure out your rectangular coordinates. Then you can clearly see that what your R and your U value, what sign they will have. Let's do one more. Convert that to rectangular coordinates. 5 angle 310. So first let's just make an XY axis and let's just think about 310 degrees. We always start from the positive X axis and we just pretend like we had our eraser at the origin and our pencil sticking out the positive X axis. So we'd start to move it around, pivot it around 90 180 plus another 90 is 270, so 310 will be somewhere over here in this fourth quadrant. And so we'll make a magnitude going down to that, and we have a magnitude of 5. So our angle that we need is 310 degrees. 
or about that. We're just estimating. We use this graph here to estimate where the point will be. And then set up a right triangle based on that point. And so this angle in here is what we need to know for our right triangle. And so that would be 360 is in a whole circle minus 310. It would be 50 degrees. This is a 50 degree angle right there. And so now let's just label our triangle. This side is R and this side is U. So if we do everything right, R will be a positive value. U will be a negative value. Let's go ahead and solve for R and U. U, that's opposite of the angle, so we would use sine of 50 degrees is equal to U over 5. So 5 sine of 50 is what we figure out. 5 times sine of 50. And so that's about 3.83. U equals 3.83. And then to figure out R, we say cosine 50 equals R over 5. Notice on these problems, cosine always goes with R, sine always goes with U. Something to remember. And so now we do 5 cosine of 50. And that's equal to about 3.21. So R equals 3.21. Now to write R point in rectangular coordinates using U and R will say 3.21 R minus, because look at the U value is negative, we have to go down to get to that point, so it's minus 3.83 U. So we use that graph to help us locate where this point is and we use our magnitude and direction to help us get there. Then we set up a right triangle relative to the x-axis based on that magnitude. And the magnitude is our hypotenuse for this right triangle. We solve for the two unknown sides. And those would equal our rectangular coordinates. And instead of writing it 3.21 comma 3.83, we use this R and U. R stands for right, U stands for up. So we go to the right, 3.21, and we go the opposite of up, since it's negative 3.83, we go down 3.83 to get to that point. So there's more than one way to locate a point on a Cartesian coordinate system. We're learning today how to find that point using a vector or polar coordinates. Look at practice problem C, this is on similar triangles. And we've been working a lot with similar triangles, except we've always had to solve for a numerical value. This time we're going to solve for a variable, and all the sides are variables. So we have this pair of inscribed triangles, we could say. And so we'll also be applying what we know about inscribed angles to help us solve this problem. So look at this. We know whenever we do a similar triangle problem, we want to set up proportions. And we think of the sides that are opposite similar angles to set up our proportions or ratios. And we know that these two sides are the same, or these two angles are the same, because they're vertical angles. Now we can also tell some other angles that are similar because of the arc that they intersect. For example, this angle that I'm putting the double angle mark on, it intercepts an arc from here to here. And so does this angle, right? If we just extend that line down to this point, we see that it intercepts there and it intercepts there. So we know that those two angles are similar. And so now we have two angles within each triangle that are similar. That means the third ones must also be similar. We can set up ratios. We can see that those third ones are similar as well because of the arcs that they intercept. Here, from here to here, and then on that bottom right angle, it intercepts here and here as well. So they intercept the same arc, 
so they must have the same angle. Remember the measure of inscribed angles, those are ones where their vertex touches the edge of the circle. The measure of those angles is half the measure of the intercepted arc. We don't need to know the values of the angles right now. I was just talking about that property of inscribed angles in a circle. Now, let's go ahead and set up our proportions. So let's do the two sides opposite the two tick marks, and we'll go from left to right. And we'd say B over D. And we'll set that equal to the sides opposite no tick marks from left to right. That would be A over C. And so we say B over D equals A over C. And we're solving for D. That's what I set up there at the top. Find D. And so cross multiply and we'd get A D equals B C. Divide both sides by A. D equals B C over A. And so that's the solution to that problem. B C over A. So instead of solving that and getting a numerical answer, we got an abstract expression, basically, one that just has variables in it. Okay, well, that's all for Lesson 54.